Hi everyone, uh, here's a look at Circuit Zolder Ultimus in the Pro Master. This is a variant of the track I've never run before, but there's only one real difference, which is the last chicane's removed for a kind of more flowing chicane. It actually does mix the track nature up quite a bit. Um, I find it much more enjoyable. It reminds me a bit more of Silverstone with this, this flowing last section that you really throw the car into. Um, this lap that I'm about to start was a 120.3 and this is in deep on morning. Now when you're coming up to the final corner, it's important to kind of pick your turning point. You're not braking in any sort of reasonable setup in here, you're not braking. Now I'm kind of looking more at that little metal guard. If you're waiting to get to the 100 as your sort of turn-in marker, you're getting a bit too late because slightly after that's where I break for the normal chicane but you've got to be turning in quite a bit earlier than that so I'm kind of looking around here about the reference and I don't know about high resolution panels but on mine it's sort of not entirely clear the CV entry point so look at that marker as your turning point and when you get to it think to start turning in spot it If you start looking at the 100, then it's already too late. You've got to kind of set the set the turn up point a little bit more, a little bit more early. There is a pretty big nasty bump in the middle of that section, which can easily throw the car offline. Um, I haven't been able to tune it out in setup yet. Maybe it's just something we'll have to live with. Maybe I can make it a bit better with the dampers. So flat to down, carry the momentum. Now you're arriving at turn one a lot faster than what you normally would um, in the original version of the track, which does make picking the apex here a bit tougher. What I'm I'm using this the difference in the black to white markers on the sideboard is the braking marker, and braking just at that transition, going down the fifth. And what you want to do is you want to get the front wheels, the front left, up on this little inside curb here. And then use all the track, run the car out wide, but don't run out too wide as it tends to catch on the outside curb. So that was pretty good. Get the front left up on this um, inside curb. And let the car run out to the outside of the track. That's about as much of that outside track as I like to use. Like sometimes you can get away with it and push it out a bit further if you have to, but I just find it somewhat too. Now here you want to move to the very outside of the track and again throw it into the inside apex but don't push it out too wide because again you get caught. So you're moving out to the left down into fourth. Now you can do one or two lines. You can either get slightly up on this inside curb or just kind of skim near it. I prefer to take the skim near it but if you get up on it it's usually quite okay. It's not too high of a curb and that will flow the car out to the outside. And avoid those those bumps on the outside curb there. They can really launch the car and break your race effectively. And then bring it quickly back into the inside apex. Quite a complex little set of corners there. They all kind of run into one another. Now here I want to enter from wide and you have to get the car into the tight apex, you don't want to miss this inside apex. So you're entering from kind of wide and taking a later apex to carry maximum momentum. Not braking, then get the hard enough to push the car out. Now here I'm down three gears on entry. And I use kind of the middle of those lollipop um, side painted bits of the track to as the down shift marker. So about you're certainly braking after that starts. Yeah, about there. And down three. Now, I noticed some people can jump this these chicanes um, and carry a lot of momentum. I find it just unsettles the car a little bit too much. I don't do it. I think it's probably quicker if you can jump them. I try to, I try to thread the car between them. So down three quickly. 
sort of just barely touched them. Just clip the very outskirts of them. That gives, keeps the car flat and gets you good, um, good exit traction. I have seen a lot of drivers, they really bounce up against this second curve with the front right, which I think if you could get the car lined up properly is probably the better way to do it. Um, I've just never felt very comfortable carrying my mentor. Down through here, you're braking before you get to this inside curb. Fairly hard, and you want to kind of try and position the car in between. Get the front right up to the the risen curb bollards on the right, then cut back and do the same on the left. Get it close to there. Now there's a limit of how much you can take without getting it off track, and you have to really push that limit. In qualifying, you may because you only get when you want to get two laps, you may want to just give it a bit more space. Um, these curbs also unsettle the car quite a lot, so this is a really tricky section of the track, and I find myself consistently a tenth or two off my optimal through here when I've done plenty of laps. That was a pretty well perfect run through here. Now after you've gone through there, you want to bring the car in, but don't get it too much off of this inside curb because it tends to jump a little bit. And lose now you're braking a fair bit after the 100 meter mark, you're looking at that and braking after it. Now what I find is um, quicker is to sort of avoid the inside curb but get better drive. If you get over the inside curb I tend to find it unsettles the car a little bit more and you lose a bit of time. But I have seen other drivers do it differently. So quite a way after the 100 meter marker on the brakes, down the second, getting close to the inside curb but not on it. And getting out. Now I think what I started doing, well what I started doing in the later laps is starting to drag the brakes sort of into the turn-in um, section and it can give you, if you unsettle the car a little bit under braking and turn it in, it can give you better rotation through there and better exit. It's quite difficult to get it right but when you do you can gain a tenth of the score. I didn't do it here, I don't believe, it was more something I was just trying in later laps, just dragging the brake and turn in a little bit. It's really important to not overshoot that corner and to pick up good drive off the exit. So I'm controlling this uh, mouse with a touchpad thing on a little wireless keyboard. It's not very accurate. Pick up good exit on the app. So if you spin up through wheels, you can just come on that here. And now back to the um, port part of the section. I'm spotting again that guard, then starting to think about turning. Throwing it in. I don't know if I actually did a little bit of a safety lift there. Yeah, I did. I just brought the throttle down a little bit. You can actually take it flat. Um, it's possible to take it flat through there, but you have to get the line completely right. Sometimes it is just a little bit quicker to lift off if you haven't got the entry. Yeah, I missed past the entry a tiny bit. You can get the car a bit closer to this inside grass, take more of a line like that over there. Whereas that lap, I took more like that and just missed it by oh, maybe 50 centimetres. And that gives you a better angle in. This probably wasn't the absolute perfect lap in the other sectors, but I got through that um, double chicane bit in the middle of the lap so well that it made up time. And in all the other laps, I was trying to beat this. I was up in other bits, but I just could not match that run through that double chicane without getting off track. Yeah, it really is flat to there. It takes a bit of confidence to build up to either flat or near full throttle, but you can really just throw the car in there and it will stick. That was a 120.341. I'd be curious to see how fast we go. I certainly think there's a touch more than that in there with a bit of um, setup tuning, but that lap's still overall a pretty good representative lap.